Costa Concordia. Ship of dreams. It's been eight years. I can still smell the buffets from their five restaurants. The casino I like and three-story theater have I like this already. hardly been used. Ah, the gym, the day spa, the sheets in her 1,500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. Holy and shit. And you could tell. And you, you could, could tell. Tell. Holy shit. That's a crazy big boat, bro. I remember it like it was just a few years ago. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Rome, and we were making our way to Savona. It was day two of our seven-day journey. Okay. But that ship, I, she was cursed. Oh, my God. When she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side instead of smashing. Uh I'm not superstitious. But I am a little stitious. I wouldn't get on that fucking boat. Bad omen, but I'm not the superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January 2012 on the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic. Fuck this, we're out! Nope! On a ship that's also only safety rated for two compartment flooding, especially not when you have a five-star max level captain like Francisco Scatino. A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. Wait, what? He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. Oh god, he looks so intelligent. He looks so intelligent too. When he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vernemont, Germany, when he was steering a different ship. Well, gee, Captain, I think we've run aground. What? <laughs> we have arrived. <laughs> and came into port too fast and what? caused another collision. What the fuck? I've got a good feeling about this. <laughs> so let's set the scene. Oh, God, no. It's a beautiful evening. People are having fun on the slides, drinks at the bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. Okay. And the ship is setting up for a Anyone little... else ever been on a cruise ship? I've been on a cruise ship once before. This is actually like a spot on. There's always shit going on on this stuff. Beetle. And there's always a goddamn magician. It's called a sail by salute. Okay. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The local... That's got to be fucking miserably annoying. Fools hate it. But yeah, they do. Love it. Yeah, fuck that shit. Tradition. Scatino, the captain, comes into the dining hall. They could never get away with that in America. People would just start shooting. With the lady, Dominica Samorton. Remember this face because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scatino eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. All right, so they're probably having sex, right? Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. Yeah. It's time for that sail by salute. Yeah. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Oh god. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Giglio. Oh and god. how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. <laughs> He's gonna what? <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing. To do. If I was that girl, I'd be like, "You're gonna, you're gonna do what? Yeah, I'm gonna go get my life." And then he looks back over. Why do you have your life vest on? Safety. Do. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman, Jacob Russellibin. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock-bottom price, and he's a bit of a newbie to the job. You don't say. 
job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and cleaner. It's his first time steering. And he's steering the fucking five point five hundred and seventy million dollar boat. Steering a massive ship, and he's very excited. At least he's we think he is. Excited. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well. This is a mess, dude. <laughs> Who hires this guy and puts him on the wheel? You're like, yo, go hold the wheel. And he's like, go hold the what? Like, no, dude. This is like when your surgeon's like, hi, I'm Dr. Phil, and I'll be your surgeon. Oh, there you are. We went over this before. Well, at all. Off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. Now, don't be confused by these numbers, they're just the degrees on a compass. Oh, At the same time, yeah. the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. Okay. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. The because he's an actual captain and knows. Captain right. is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. We're going closer than we've ever been before. Jesus fucking Christ. It's always good to just eyeball it when you get that close. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300. I love the thumb. Out. The thumb. Downstairs, <laughs> Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the queue, and then she'll poke her legs Can out. I get a hello? Hello. Hello. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. The yeah, because when you speed up the boat, it's very difficult to slow back down again without just dropping the anchor and ripping half the boat up, uh, in half. Before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Language barrier. Because at this point, the captain says, 325. But the helmsman relays, 315. So oh, motherfucker can't listen? The first officer intervenes, and he goes, no, 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 335. Holy shit, they're all stupid. Like, honestly, does everyone on this boat believe that the Earth is a globe? Is everybody vaccinated? Which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The helmsman confirms 325. Okay. Their poor First try. Communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. However, the captain should- That's okay, he's been in this situation before. Just let it keep going. You come to a nice abrupt stop right in the harbor. And would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're not doing it. 3.30. Because... Because uh, it looks good. We're eyeballing it. He says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. A few seconds pass, and then the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly. <laughs> Golly, we're a little too close to shore. Directly <laughs> in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia right now is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks oh, than Jesus, it should be. Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Oh, shit! Scatino immediately commands yeah. the ship to start to... But see, you can't turn now because you're moving too fast. Oh, Jesus. Away. Three, three, five. Oh, no. Not enough. The captain shouts, 340. No, 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 no. Because what happens, the, what happens to the boat, I've been on a boat before. You try to turn the ship, right? He's trying to turn this way, but the problem is he, you just keep drifting more this way, but now you're sideways. Like, yeah, the front of the ship turns that way, but you keep moving this way. The captain yells, 350. 
Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. No! What they've got is- You can't just turn the wheel? Like it's some sort of fucking racing game? Understand. Here's an example. Their front end is not working. You're like Fast and the Furious? Well, they're Tokyo drifting. Well, technically, they're in Italy drifting. Turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order of 350, yeah. right now, the bow is still it? only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough. To Look at the fucking, the boat's still going this way. Bro, they're fucked. Miss the rock. And oh no, it's about to get worse. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. Bro, just turn the wheel right! Honestly, like, fuck, man, just that way, dude, like... The captain snaps back, 350 starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Now, don't... Boy, I bet your date's probably thinking that this was a mistake, huh? Get confused by the orders from here, we're changing over to rudder instructions. Okay. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. Just turn the wheel right, dumbass. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. Okay. So the captain yells, yeah, midship, they get, yeah, which okay. centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull This is rock. a fucking disaster. Port 10. But the helmsman only gets to port 5 before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst. How the fuck do you not understand? <laughs> possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port. What? What? You actually steered the boat into the rocks? This is a classic example. I, I, this is, this is wild. This is why people in Node War can't listen to me properly. Undoing the swing. Eight seconds later, he realizes the error. Oh, oh, you meant, oh, you meant turn the wheel right. Oh, I, that's, that's my bad. See, because you can make an L with your left fucking hand. Yeah, that's how you normally tell that he makes it, it happens to everybody. You know what I mean? Correct, but it's too late. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port. The second officer yells, we're gonna hit. Oh God. Collision. Oh Jesus. Don't, don't worry Captain, we'll buff out those scratches. It'll be okay. People are gonna die. Bro, you hit rocks like that, people are actually gonna die. The ship hits rocks on the port side. A 53 <laughs> meter from gash the opens up in the hull, and thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Ah, oh, that shit's Martin over. Awkwardly pauses. Just start looting. The ship is going down. Just start grabbing shit. It's all super expensive. It's a W. His act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside is trapped and terrified. There's confusion across the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Yep. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Well, at least you're going away from the shore. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. 22.
Wow, he actually got all of them. Seconds later, a blackout happens. So he got all of the engines and electrical on fucking command. Honestly, I don't even know if you could script that. If you were trying to do that, I mean, that would have been really hard. Lights, electrics, the water pumps too. Everything. The captain orders the helmsman hard starboard. This is the final position of the rudder before power to that too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard. Oh, good. Plunged into absolute darkness. This would be mayhem. This would be mayhem. Have you ever been on a boat where the lights go out and you're below deck? This would be absolute pandemonium. It's complete darkness. It's a complete quick darkness. Of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six more slowly, four shortly after. Then seven, eight, and three. He actually fucking smoked this jackpot, baby! Yahtzee! Woo! <laughs> Modern ships are built with. If you were playing Plinko in The Price is Right, you would have just fucking nailed it, man. You won $10,000. Stand two compartment breaches. These compartments, especially though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. These main generators give power to the whole ship. Yep. From propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions, pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless, sinking cage. Oh, good. A few seconds later, the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. That's With why those exist, okay? Because if it's pitch black, no one would know where to go. Lights come back on. Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage. Oh my and God, a Martin! Huge panic in the theater as passengers are trying to flee to their cabin. Martin said, "Fuck this." And to muster stations. I'm not paid People enough. Ready in their cabins, come out and start putting on life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. I would be putting on my life vest. All the while thinking, this is fucking awesome. I'm going to make a fortune off this settlement. This is going to be great. Just make sure that you survive and you're going to you're going to get a killing. Everything is fine. There's no need for this. Please return to your cabins. The emergency generator starts. All of the watertight doors close except for door 12. Which is jammed. God damn it, door the 12. Pulls Pilot, the chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? Yes! There's water, you can't go down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps, I'll let you know. In th there's water coming in? God, that's weird. I don't know why that. Why would there be water coming in? I the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage. Did, did you guys do something down there? Like, you rip a hole in the ship? What? Falls into the crowd, further increasing panic. On the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. Let's just say we have a blackout. What was the loud crash? The deputy chief engineer Part enters of the, the magic show. room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments five, six, and seven are flooded. Announcements are made. We have the captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault, which is currently under control, we are currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to resolve the situation, and we'll inform you of. People have their life vests on. They're like, "Fuck this." Developments as they occur. Thank you for your attention. Smart people. Coincidentally, at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing My Heart Will Go On, and it's very much not helping the situation. <laughs> the captain calls the Costa Crisis Unit, Roberto Ferrarini. He tells the Crisis Unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages, and that they are also in a blackout. The Crisis Office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the True. engine. You know, hoist the sails? Anyway, a... Check W. Around this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting oh, right back towards the shore, which is a v oh, good. very good thing because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. True, because otherwise people will drown. A panicked passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. It's weird. There's plates on the floor and the ship is tilting. There was a massive crashing noise and now the ship is tilting. So she contacts her daughter in Italy. The daughter then calls the police and the police call the harbour master. 
While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point, We are fucked. Do you understand? The engines are fucked. The electricity is fucked. We're all fucked. I that the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. Wrong. At the bottom, it says there's three compartments. He's wrong again. The ship's stability is in danger. Yeah, we're passengers begin going to. We're doing fine. I'm holding on to this railing just in case. He's like leaning at a 45. Master stations on their own initiative. The cruise director says we have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says I think that's best. The harbor master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? Uh, about 20 minutes. Have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. Standard the procedure. The is suspicious. He's oh, thank God the harbor master's a specimen. Says to his superior. Probably because he's actually driven a boat before without crashing. Is that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another problem. The fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. $570 million. Door 12 doesn't fucking close. Flooding another compartment. And the very critical diesel fucking fans that are powering the ship. Those may or may not work. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks, asking pointless questions like, is it still flooded? Yep, the water's still there, chief. Yes, yes it is. The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. The harbor master calls again. Finally, he says, the ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing. He qualifies with, no one dead or injured. The harbor master asks if he needs help. Just a tugboat. When in reality, they need a just just a tugboat. I think we're gonna be fine. Full rescue. With three compartments flooded, the captain finally realizes that things are really bad and they are not going to improve. The coast guard orders every available ship to the scene. Meanwhile, up with the pass. They're geniuses. Thank fucking God the Coast Guard are smart people. The cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges. No problem. Are you fucking she kidding me? Despite knowing it was wrong and that it further endangered. Uh, everybody go back to your cabins. It's fine. Everything's fine. Why do you have your life vest on? No reason. Just go back to your cabins. Lives. Most passengers at this point, though, aren't listening to this nonsense, and they're busy figuring out how to abandon ship. Bang, 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 bang. Local television has already picked up the story, and they begin. Oh, we're like 25 minutes in, and the fucking news has helicopters around the boat. How the fuck do we not have the safety crews here yet? How in the hell? Oh, oh yeah, no, this looks like it's fine. This boat looks good. Don't worry, Captain. This looks good to me. Don't even worry. Yeah, no, that's perfectly straight. Broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Hey, couple. Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. The captain says, no. <laughs> Just get the fuck out of there, guys, bro. He's a fucking idiot. You know that's what's going on. He's like, bro, this captain's a fucking moron. Stay. We'll leave it. So what do we do? General. Thanks, Austin. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, buddy. Emergency? The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandoned ship. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Uh 
The situation is under control. Get off the boat. Looks under control to me. Again, the captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator okay. for the final time. All right. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, Good. the ship is very close to shore. Oh. Perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground. Create this captain's just taking W's today. Creating an uneven center of gravity, and it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called, and alarms ring out. And with that, get off the boat. Comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available, and they have to start going back and forth to- Not enough lifeboats? No! We've never seen this before! The shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbor. You should honk the horn. LOL. He said he wanted to do a little, uh, a little, a little drive-by. You are, in fact, now closer than you ever were before. Honk the horn. Master, that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbor master asks the captain about, and the captain says, "No, no, no, no. The ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to maneuver it onto the shore." Floating is such a strong word. You know what I mean? It's a very strong word. They know he's... But in a much realer sense, we're all going to die. Line. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain then says to bottom out the starboard anchor. So they drop out the anchors, but let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. These are the worst fucking boat drivers I have ever seen. Even the person dropping the anchor fucks it up. This is nuts. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbor. They watch the scene unfold. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning okay. to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios. Okay. But not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Oh! Priorities. Hey, what? Dimitri Christidis and Sylvia Koronica leave with him. The maitre d' and some more can both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people... Can you just leave? I thought the captain goes down with his ship thing was, like, legitimate. I thought you had to, like, stay on the boat. Are still on the ship. Melee reaches the helicopter base. The first helicopter, a slow moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour long flight south. Oh my god, we couldn't have Ozio a closer. Is the last crew member left on the bridge coordinating evacuation. He oh. then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And Sweet. then the ship's black box stops working. Apparently, there were technical problems with it. That oh, means good. from here, things are going to get a little. Again. Five hundred and seventy million dollars. Foggy in detail. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Passengers are scaling down. What the do you mean you can't find the ship? It's a giant ass fucking cruise liner. Port side by ladder as lifeboats return to pick them up. It's half out of the water. No, no joke. Oh my goodness. It looks good. We're not actually sinking, uh, mainly because we've hit the bottom of the ocean. Not technically sinking. Yes. You're not allowed to make a film I'm, movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Who say you are? A second helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final rest. Oh, good. Yeah, see, we've hit the bottom. Positive mental attitude. We're not sinking anymore. 
resting place. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learnt that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a klutz. But I slipped and fell into a lifeboat. This is like that guy that slipped and fell off the ladder and then the light bulb just <laughs> right up his ass. Look at that. Crazy. Who, change a who changes a light bulb naked? You know what I mean? Now that I'm on board, I, I may as well head back to shore. DeFalco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. And the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. From here, we what only have fuck? mainstream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be super accurate. But they say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara. And among them is the captain. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. What else was he supposed to do? He's not on the fucking boat anymore. A while later, a rescue boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbour. He speaks to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, and cry to him for about 15 minutes. Pray for me. I'm going to jail. <laughs> then he goes to the harbour master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30-second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. But then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. Is that why the rescue operation is still going on, sir? Sir? The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? We were the last to leave the ship. All they said, they rescue a search for people on the ship. I mean, give him, give him a break. He had wet socks. On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. What? That's the heaviest sleepers of all fucking time, dude. The boat's literally 90 degrees on its side. In order to sleep through this, you actually would have had to sleep through the bed turning at 90 degrees. Holy shit. Someone give him a medal or something. The last survivor, men... That or they were actually just having sex and didn't want to admit it. Enrico Giampandroni was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin service director. In the end, 32 people died. Oh my the god. The final body dude. wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. Holy shit. A crew shit. member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. Oh my god, dude. All that money just vaporized, dude. I'm telling you, this is why before you leave the ship, guys, if, you're, if your cruise liner ever sinks, this is the best thing that's ever happened to you. Grab a bunch of fucking super expensive shit, start throwing it in bags, okay? And then just fucking get off the ship and then sue the shit out of them for emotional damages. Win. Jesus Christ. Bro, all of that's just wasted, man. Oh my god, dude. But this isn't the end. It's just the halfway point. Oh good, because if the boat... What most people know is that the cost... There ain't no way they left that boat laying in that harbor like that, right? ...to Concordia had crashed, many dead, and then the captain abandoned ship like a coward. 
But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. No, don't. No! There they are. The deets. You're so stupid. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> the memes, dude. All right, so people did loot it. Okay, yeah, like that's. Uh huh. Yeah, it'd be like something out of fucking Fortnite. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall, a casino. Yeah, ching, dude. Ching, ching. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers. Is that a fucking Overwatch loot box he just fucking opened? This little rat. And expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. Wet High socks. end liquor, expensive furniture, dining sets, cash Who's from the casino. Who got the piano out? Casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists, as well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. Who the f Who steals a big fuck off bell? It's probably worth a shitload of money. It's a giant ass fucking bell. Also, it's probably a hundred pounds, at least. It's probably at least 100 pounds. If that shit... I, I don't know how the fuck... That person's a specimen. Whoever the fuck that is unhooked a 100-pound bell and then swam with it to the surface. Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to reef... Lift bags. No, no, no. It's important to me that they, they pulled it off the ship and then they carried it like a specimen. They didn't attach any pussy-ass balloons to it. The Concordia was spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. What? And the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. The PUBG really just nailed it. A patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of. Oh, we were just, we were just trying. Yeah, no, we what we was doing is we had a situation here, and we was trying to refloat the ship, but that we have now comfortably assessed that there's too much water down here. That's what has happened. There's too much water here, and, and the ship, the ship is down. Here. Yeah. Stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing and thieving. Yeah, they're just reducing the weight so it floats Later again. on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, postcards. Where else are you going to sell them? And cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. And even I bet if there's a bell, I bet a break has a watermark. Some Australian guy even made a... It's even got a watermark. Jesus fucking... Listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. LOL. <laughs> and although there were plenty of bidders, eBay pulled the plug. The memes, dude. The relationship. I know you want to see oh, Scatino no. go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, we have to talk about someone else. He definitely went to jail. There's no way he didn't. Sir Morton. That was a close one. There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Tense media. No, she would never. Speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They I have never been distracted. I, I have respectfully looked at women. I've never been distracted in my life. My duties, honestly, they, they help focus me even harder on making sure that we hit that rock. Both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. And the help. first thing I said when he was standing with the girl, I was just like, this girl, she digging. She's digging. They're having sex. Could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. 
but she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe, they want to know I have something with him, it's more interesting, it's like, you know, some spicy, spicy. in the story. Mr. Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Oh, uh, everyone, oh, look! And took several interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon of course her, she, did. she began making ominous threats. You're talking about a woman who literally was dating the fucking captain of the boat. If we called her an attention whore, it might not just actually sum it up. Like, it, it might not be enough. It's just Katina. Saying he must confess. And that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? This bitch is implying that there were drugs on the boat. Bro, she's just fucking sending it. Just full sending. And actually implied that a helicopter came to get the drugs before the people. And what was that package? Drugs, apparently. So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the mafia. What and the not fuck? Without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an aside, Scudino. That's really smart. I mean, illegal. That is very illegal. So illegal was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was... This... Yet another reason why you shouldn't have hair. Not that I'm saying that you shouldn't also not do drugs, but... I just want to say that if he didn't have hair, he still would have been caught because they would have taken the they would have taken the sample from his pubic hair. Okay. Hair yeah, sample makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched and no drugs were reportedly ever found. How did we get here? Oh right, a helicopter. Sir Morton commented on it again the next day. Wait, As is that a fucking person? Oh right, a helicopter. Oh my fucking god, is there a fucking person in there? Oh my god, that's the worst rescue helicopter I've ever seen. Bro, what the fuck? Play, <laughs> oh god. Oh no. No, dude, that's the that might kill that person! Sir Morton commented on it again the next day and said, Actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first-class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Yeah. Wait, how did we get here? Oh, right. Sex with the captain. Play, 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 play. Divers were quick yep. to head to the captain's cabin where they found Mr. Simple. Morton's lingerie and other articles of... Don't sleep your way to the middle clothing as well as a makeup bag. The jig was up, but they continued denying it. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. The judge pressed her to be true. She's gonna break so fucking fast. She's gonna sing as if she's a canary. Like, I actually just... about their relationship. Or she would be held in contempt. She looks like a weasel the truth or shut up so finally she admitted it she yes shocked really grilled her i had a sentimental relationship with the captain stop but now stop asking about my private life she was well, that was that was all we needed honey we don't really need to know about your girlfriend or your boyfriends in high school maybe about your girlfriends in college though Indeed, the captain's lover. What is up, Trouble Nation? What's it, team? No, she did. I'm his wife with Seymour Tan. He has a fucking wife? Never mind. That makes it way fucking worse. Honestly, I don't know what we expected. This dude abandoned the fucking $570 million boat that he was put in charge of. Oh my god! She and Scatino had been having an affair for several weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because.
in Indiana Jones, they just throw you out of the blimp for that. Nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. Natalie, Looks good to me. Another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. And today I die the second time because, of course, people <laughs> find out something that I try to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her. Bitch, what? fame in Moldova to become a political activist, often appearing on television and radio and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. I for one am shocked. I love how she pushes him. Stop assaulting me! All right, that bitch going to jail. It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, girl power, yada yada yada. And interestingly, oh yeah, super fun stuff. Part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. I can fix her. Seek Jesus. There's religious counseling 24 hours a day, all night and weekends too. Sure, sure. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her Instagram. Oh, God. Bro, this woman just... Uh, who's in charge? I find you very attractive. That's unreal. Man, that... That person has a hunchback. He's so fucking hot. Oh, not again. <laughs> Dude, I love every transition is just some new way that the boat is gonna get fucking destroyed. Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crochier. Absolutely. Company, Carnival Cruises. Alright, these guys have all the fucking money. Sue these for big dollars. Big dollars. Immediately saw a share drop of 23%. I don't know why. Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, yeah. and loved ones. Yeah. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion-dollar ship was. Within a few days, face. Technically, it was only half a billion dollars. Actually. Facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the band. Carnival. That's where the clowns live actually true true and wagon against the captain and the crew actually that big truth the ordinary route that the ship was uh, taking uh, at the time and and was not only taking by the time the, the ship Today, was junior claiming that <laughs> <laughs> yo i wasn't gonna say because i thought it would be too offensive but he did it for me it's fine we're good the ship was not approved to deviate from the route, but that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because uh -oh. investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route. Oh, that's fun. Deviation from course policy, no LOL. Hey, the best way to not get sued is to just not have any fucking rules. So technically he didn't break any fucking rules. Oh, and they tacitly encouraged sale by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crochier offered pass. Again, he could have, he, he technically could still have blown the horn while the boat was in the, in the harbor. And he also would have had the closest sale by salute that any carnival cruise liner had ever had. So honestly, he could have set a record missed opportunity. Passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's kind of small. Yeah, it's not enough. Eleven thousand euros, about fourteen thousand dollars, is the. Yeah, what about all the fucking money they had to use to get home and shit? Minimum compensation under international Hell no. law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early.
Oh, hell no, dude. You're going in. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, were not too happy with this deal, and yeah. they refused to take the money. We think Correct. the offer is an Good. insult yep. for what these poor passengers went through. We think that the company... This guy doesn't give a fuck. This guy doesn't care. Compensation being offered is not commensurate. Here. Take it. <laughs> Jesse Finkman! Yo! I love this shit. I love this. this is so good. Divinity TV with the brand new Prime sub, man. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Compensation being offered is not commensurate. Later, Costa Crociere would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa what? Crochier is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto the fa- What a joke. What a fucking joke. ...faces of six staff members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal response. Yeah, what the fuck, dude? Ability. Offered is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. Costa Disturbia. <laughs> Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against yeah. Scatino in his trial in 2015. Well, well, Scatino doesn't have any money. The whole problem here is that Carnival should have paid these people all this fucking money, okay? They should have paid them for emotional damages, cost of living, all of it. They, they pay them for all of it because Carnival is the company that has the money. They were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. Okay, we like undisclosed amounts. Dude, every... <laughs> stupid, dude. New York attorney Peter Rene traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At Rene and Rene, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. And while on uh, Christian92 tip five dollars said, hey Blue, what are you gonna be for Halloween? Single and not homeless. On the job, I see. Hey! That's our boy right there. That's our fucking boy. Look at that, bro. Holy fucking shit. Plus, what kind of filthy fucking troglodyte doesn't actually follow Asmongold? Is this a joke? I mean, technically, it's this is old because it's on his normal channel, but... Seventh case cropped up got via mail. email. An elderly woman, a loner, said, Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. Ronai agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Okay. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd. But Costa is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bit. Still, Mr. Gotcha, bit. <laughs> Mr. Ronai was suspicious. They wouldn't cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Ilona said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. He looks like a trustworthy guy. Honestly, to the women in the audience who look at this guy, I bet that all of those fucking, I bet all the females in the audience, they just think of... Winner. Fucking winner. You know what really does it? It's the goddamn toothpick. Adult Horvath. He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Uh. So you lost your two children. One of which was five years old. And you asked how much money this is going to be worth? 
Did you just not? I mean, there's so many things wrong with this. Did you just not think that they were going to check? Like, how the fuck did you think that this was going to translate into money? Because they're just going to put out a search party to find your lost kids. This is a huge red flag, Petey. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, uh, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and oh. the child isn't missing at all. Uh-huh. You mean the children? Because there were two. Yeah! Yeah, both, both the kids have been found. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. That's always good. Just admit to the felony. Oh. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and okay. brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw her today. Didn't even get the granddaughter to lie for you. Didn't even tell her what was going on. Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. How interesting. Oh no, the jig was up. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle. Oh and my the story god! Changed. Oh, oh Rox, there you are! Oh my god! Again, okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. <laughs> the pristine, the pristine ankle. But you weren't even on, wait, but you weren't even on the boat. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although, don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, old Petey, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mum, it's just a neighbour. It what the fuck? They won't investigate, they'll just give us the money. For sure. They won't look missing kids, they don't give a shit about it, they're just gonna throw money at us. It's free. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken it. Except insurance fraud. Which is a felony. Any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the book. Oh, well then, yeah, they're absolutely right. Then technically they did nothing wrong because Hungary is stupid. The love room that never sleeps. Call 1-800-664-7. Oh no. Oh, oh no. <laughs> the transitions are so good. Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course. Means get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, thanks. Gregorio de Felga. The naval officer who shouted at Scatino to Vada a bordo caso mm -hmm. became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. As he should. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. And when the captain chickened out, I love that song. De Falco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. I wonder who it is. Bro, just don't answer your phone. You know what he's going to tell you. Like, is this a joke? When the captain first reported just a blackout, DeFelco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Yep. Accordingly, shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso were being. So we use this to get into politics? Being printed by the end of the week. Very good. Others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then. In September 2014, without warning, DeFalco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. 
Hear what I said, he'd been demoted. DeFelker said that he had been passed up for promotion, that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. DeFelco. It's okay, because you're gonna, you're gonna get into politics. Hold on, let him cook. Was. Trez Furioso. And there was public Three speculation furious. that it was owing to bad blood between himself and Admiral Delano, his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, ah, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity and professionalism to advise. That's what they told me when I got fired. Answers career. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March that year, there it is. He was elected to the Italian there Senate, it is. serving as a member for yep. Livorno. He still serves Smart. there today. I'm the captain now. Nice. Now you don't have to do anything. Are you so good at this? Because that's how people work, right? They use that. They use really good press like that to springboard themselves into politics. Because all politics is is a popularity contest. This motherfucker and his transitions are so good. That dude. All right, here we go. Jail time. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While All under right. house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rai magazine. So, the way he has them don't sleep with her. I have no idea what it says. I don't speak Italian. But God damn it, he must have some kind of charisma going on because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. What the fuck, man? Can someone get this? He's in prison right now, right? Like, I can just call the prison and I can get on the phone and I can ask him what his, like, like, like what's the secret? Well, you can't keep getting away with it! Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. <laughs> so, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatino's. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences mm -hmm. are that they must provide witness testimony. We're gonna fuck him. They do this all the time. We don't want you guys. You guys are all idiots. We're after him. Against Scatino. He touched me. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Oh, W. Not a bad deal. A good deal. A good deal. Good deal. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. Nice. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. Oh my God. I love that he got an Instagram photo there of her. confusion over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness test. Bro, this dude's Indiana Jones, dude. What's going on? Testimony. He just scarped again. And he hasn't been found since. Actually, unreal. Fuck that, I'm not talking to anybody. After that, no Jeremy way. gave his testimony, then Sil uh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing yeah. a shipwreck, yep. abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. In fairness, he's guilty of all of this shit, but uh, it should have been Carnival that was put under the gun. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month in prison. But wait, there's still the appeals. The appeals trial begins. Yeah, this is gonna go well. And the verdict on the appeal? 
Surprise! Rejected. <laughs> so Scatino's lawyers appealed again. And the verdict on the final Rejected appeal... Rejected again! Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution no. called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see. A titanic affair. Mm. Good journalism. See what you did there. Scatino was not present. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months... It's so that when he got out, he'd still be young enough to riz up the ladies. After the disaster, he was finally in a cell. That's fucking crazy. That dude smoked that bowl, bro! The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years yeah. and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Beginning oh in God. early 2012, they first spent... And all the pollution that was put into the ocean doing that? Oh my God. Two no. months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. Oh, this is smart. By late 2000... Somebody with a brain put this together. 13, the ship was upright once more. All right. The sponsons were then... Let's set sail. ...then attached to the side of the ship to help yeah. keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would be... Okay, well, at least the boat's not still there anymore. Again. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper. Look at the fuck he's risen up the fucking, honestly, whatever, but like that, he's risen up the fucking ladies again, dude. What is it Flanked with this by guy? by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. What the f What's your pickup line? I sank that boat like I sank my marriage? Like... Anyway... So these are the things that I remember from the Costa Concordia. That sweet maiden of the sea. And as for you, little fella... You see how I fucked that boat? You're next. It's time to re Should have seen how I fucked the first boat. Did you? From whence you came. There's the bell. Yeah, it's. Six quick things. One, NordVPN, good product, check them out. Number two, there's a new video on the second channel. You probably didn't see it because it was temporarily restricted. Now it's not. Enjoy. Three, if you've never seen the second channel before, give it a go. It's a different type of content, but we put a lot of production into it. It's not just offcuts. Four, there are a couple of secret channels as well, but I ain't telling you where they are. Five, for no more 45 minute videos on the main channel. Back to 10 to 15 minutes and more of them. Six, there's a Q&A coming out next week on incognito mode. It's got a ton of details. That this we had was to cut for so the sake of good. And we'll this was such a good fucking video. Holy shit. This was a ride.